Well, hello, and thanks for watching another episode of ARFCOM News, your twice weekly dose of the finest 2 way propaganda. Hey, champ, that new ATF rule on private firearm transfers got you down? Not to worry, maybe you can buy a gun on Tinder. Hey, Bruce, really? You betcha, champ. According to F Troop, that's where many criminals are buying their guns these days. Apparently, the feds are just now discovering the internet can actually be used for something other than warrantless spying on innocent Americans. That is what the internet was made for! Crazy, I know. But people can actually use the internet to communicate with each other and to buy and sell goods. And this is all part of their push to end private sales. That article I just showed you was reporting on a new study published by the ATF claiming that over 40% of guns trafficked to criminals come through private sales. They're not going to drop this. They're, they're not going to let this one go anytime soon. They really want to ban private sales because they really want to have that registry. There's only one reason. And one reason alone. They're going to kill us all! So what can we do about it? Well, I think the best answer is a voluntary instant background check system open to everyone, where no information about the gun or the seller is recorded, and the buyer simply performs a check on himself, which then generates a token which the seller can check on a website. If it's open to everyone, then it can be used for any purpose, not just guns, making it useless as a registry. Might have gotten away with it too, if it wasn't for these blasted kids and their dog. But it would be impossible for us to produce quality 2A propaganda without sponsors, so let's pay some bills. Today's video is sponsored by Franklin Armory, because anything worth shooting is worth shooting twice, and going binary is your Fed-approved solution. Want reduced split times and tighter groups? With a Franklin Armory binary firing system, you can improve these important shooting metrics and more. Visit franklinarmory.com and gain the selectable option to fire on both the pull and release trigger functions of your semi-automatic firearm today. And by TNVC.com, your source for bespoke artisanal non-GMO night vision products expertly forged by Amish craftsmen in the heart of a dying star. And by Hydra. The Mark 15 Hydra is the most versatile black rifle platform the industry has ever seen. The most you will ever need to convert calibers is a barrel, a bolt, and a magwell. Changing is quick and easy, and the combinations are practically limitless. With just one serialized lower, you can have any configuration you can imagine. Hell, even the former deputy assistant director of the ATF, Pete Forcelli, said the new rule is just so much male bovine fecal matter. In an interview with Cam Edwards of Bearing Arms, Forcelli said, It's subject to interpretation. It's subject to overreach. Is it one step closer to a registry? Is it one step closer to universal background checks? One step closer to economic equilibrium. It's just one more example of this current ATF director, who I've heard is a nice man who is being misguided by folks at the White House who have some very strong opinions against firearms. Because they are evil slime. Porcelli also pointed out the Bipartisan Gun Control Act included a provision setting criminal penalties for people actually trafficking guns to criminals. Rather than getting wrapped around the axle about who is required to get a license, it would be a lot more productive to lock up the people actually doing all this trafficking they're worried about. And y'all want to bet that if I tried to get an FFL, they would deny me because I don't sell enough guns? Come to think of it, maybe that's the best way to fight this overreach. Every single time you even think about selling a gun, fire off a letter to the AFT and ask them if you need to have an FFL to do that transfer. If nothing else, maybe it will keep them from kicking in your door at Odark 30 looking for someone to shoot. But if they do, let's hope the attorney general in your state is half as based as Tim Griffin, the Arkansas attorney general. Mr. Griffin has demanded that F Troop release body cam recordings from the early morning raid on Brian Malinowski's home. Malinowski was a peaceable man who worked as the director of the Little Rock Airport, but an ATF agent shot him in the face after busting down his door before dawn. The ATF claims Malinowski fired at them, but his family says that is very unlikely he would do that sort of thing, and if he had a gun at all, it was because he thought criminals were breaking in. I suppose in a manner of speaking, he was right. From a certain point of view. A certain point of view? 
Why hasn't the ATF released the body cam video? Does it show something embarrassing? While they claim Malinowski fired first, they haven't claimed he was the one who hit the agent who was wounded. Does that mean he was hit by friendly fire? It wouldn't be the first time. In any case, the shooting is under investigation by the Arkansas State Police and they will decide whether to charge any of the agents. We'll keep following this closely and rest assured, we'll let you know how it develops, so stay tuned. Ain't no control freak like a New York control freak, and now they're trying to shut down the shooting ranges with the deceptively named Sporting Range Good Neighbor Act. It requires that skeet ranges be at least 600 yards by 300 yards to limit lead pollution. Okay, so roast me if you want, but is this even a gun rights issue? I mean, my position has always been that it's constitutional to regulate what people do with guns. Like, for example, you're not allowed to shoot inside city limits in many states, and, and I don't see that losing in court anytime soon. The Second Amendment enumerates our right to have arms and to carry them, right? It, it doesn't say, keep, bear, and shoot the blazes out of anything we want. Fuck life. Like, we can argue about whether the law is necessary. It's not. But... I gotta say, this isn't really quite exactly a 2A issue, is it? It's more of a property rights issue. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as the shot is falling on my property, it shouldn't be any of their business, right? On the other hand, if you want to build a house next to a shooting range and you're a scuzzy New York developer, well, just pay your legislator to force the shooting ranges to purchase a buffer zone of land around their property, right? And if there isn't enough land to buy, well, <laughs> They'll just have to shut down, leaving more land available for your housing development. The law says if you don't have enough room for a 300-yard by 600-yard range, you can construct a backstop to prevent lead shot from leaving the range. But... So some folks are saying this gives the state the opportunity to come in later and shut down ranges by claiming the backstop isn't tall enough, no matter how tall it is, because they never specified how tall it needed to be. What do you think? Is this constitutional? And now... For your moment of zen. No recoil spring. Find your local port john steal the springs off the door. Put one in the hole on the bayonet. The other one to the back of the bolt. Just like that. Yeah, it might be a little too tight. We're going to adjust it right to the bottom of the bayonet instead. Let's do that. Hey friends, do you like pews and other pew-related things? Do you want to help us keep delivering you pure uncut American pew propaganda at the low, low price of free 99? We literally couldn't pay the bills without our sponsors, so do us a solid and get yourself something nice from them. You deserve it. I love you. Byron. Byron.